and welcome back to Big Red's Cooking. As always, I'm Big Red. <clears throat> so this week I thought I'd switch it up a little bit. I've been normally doing meals lately. I thought, you know what, we're all stuck at home. We're doing the whole COVID thing. Not really getting out. You know, you're probably watching a lot of movies at home right now. And you probably like to have a chip. You know what? So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make chips on your own today. It's a really, really simple thing to do. doesn't take too much. And, you know, any of you guys can do it. It just comes down to having the right type of potato and the right temperature. So, as always, let's jump on over to the workbench and we'll pick up over there. All right. So, if you watched my video recently, I did all about the moose meat Big Mac and I made french fries. We know that we've got to slice our potatoes down into cold water and we know we want a good russet. But in case you didn't, I'll just sort of back up a little bit. So what I've got here is I've got russet potatoes. These are a good mealy potato or we'd also refer to as a starchy potato. You know, our other types of potatoes are what are, we refer to as a waxy potato which tends to be very high in sugar. We want to avoid those because those tend to burn really bad in our deep fryer. The higher sugar content tends to get very weird streaks and things like that. So if you're going to be trying to make uh, potato chips at home, you definitely want to make sure you've got a good wax, or sorry, good mealy potato. Right, now you're not necessarily going to see mealy on the bags, but what you can look for is a baking potato. Like I say, specifically if you can find a russet potato works really well. But anything labeled as a baking potato and not something labeled as a boiling potato is what you're going to go for. So the first thing I want to do is I want to remove any obvious blemishes. Now I don't need to be eating that stuff. I'm making my chips at home because I want a superior product to what I can get at the store. And sometimes it's just nice to do these things for ourselves anyhow. We're all sort of locked down at home right now with COVID. Or at the time of this recording, man, many of us are. So I've got here what's called a mandolin. Uh, and this basically is just a device for slicing. You know, it's got a pretty sharp blade there. I do have other attachments I can put into it. But for now, I just want a nice sort of flat cut. Now let's ha check out our thickness here. Uh, maybe a little thick, so I'm going to just adjust that a little bit. Perfect. So I'm just going to go ahead and slice these right on down into my water here. So there we go. So I'm give these a good rinse. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to give my rinse again. We can see there's a lot of starch that's come out of that water already. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse these again. And then what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to throw a little bit of white vinegar in there as well. And that's going to help to keep them nice and light in color. All right, so I got these in some fresh water here. I rinsed them around a little bit, got rid of some of that excess starch. Got a bit of vinegar into this water. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this. You can hear my dogs in the background. I think there's a cat in the yard. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this into the fridge for a couple hours, and then we'll give these a fry in a little while. All right, so we're almost ready to start frying our potato chips. I've got them well drained off. You can see they've stayed nice and white in color. They've actually curled up a little bit. Now, I wanna try and avoid getting water into my fat if I can. So I like to give these a little pat and dry. Now I tend to just use a piece of paper towel. Sometimes if I got a clean tea towel, I'll use that. But anything at all that you can use just to absorb a little bit of this water, so you're less likely to get that splashing of that hot fat when you go ahead and put these down into the hot fat. All right. Now, I've got my fat on my stove here. You can see I've got my candy thermometer. What I'm aiming for is a temperature of about 300 degrees Fahrenheit. I will strongly caution you that you should not do this. I am a professional. I have my fire extinguisher super handy. I've got my candy thermometer here. I'm very familiar with what I'm doing. You know, I know how this stuff works. So, 
I would caution you and strongly encourage that if you intend to do any deep frying at home, that you purchase a deep fryer. There's lots of great countertop models out there. I did have one. I wasn't happy. I didn't found, find it got to the correct temperatures for what I needed. Uh, but I will be purchasing another one for myself soon. But in the meantime, this works well for me because, like I say, I'm a professional. I've been at this for a very long time. I know exactly what I'm doing, and I feel comfortable and I feel safe in my skill set. You know, and from what I understand, I can't say this definitively, but from what I understand, if you were to have a fire and you're doing something like this, your insurance company would not actually cover you. It could be considered in violation of your insurance policy. So like I say, you're better off, just go buy yourself a deep fryer. All right. Okay, so my fat is at 300 degrees here now. I don't wanna go putting too many in at one time. I don't wanna go overloading. For one thing, it's gonna mean that they don't cook as evenly. But what can happen as well, we put too much into our fat all one time. Well, a couple things. One, we can get that big rise in our fat, but it'll also drop our temperature down. And so what you wanna do is make sure you stir these around. Because otherwise they can stick together and then they won't cook evenly and properly. And say so we don't want our temperature too high because what can happen if our temperature is too high, which is why I'm going like you know, typically we're deep fat frying at about 300 degrees Fahrenheit, or sorry, 350 Fahrenheit. I'm doing these at about 300 because if we did it at that 350, they'd actually get too dark before they get too crispy. This is going to allow us to get that crunch that we're looking for without actually getting them too dark too quick. So I'm starting at that nice chip color and go ahead and pull these out. And we'll give our fat a moment to recover. What I'm going to do is give these a little shake of salt right away. Make sure they're evenly coated. Right? Give them a little toss and then I got my collector bowl there. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these done. And we'll pick up again once we get through all these uh, these chips. All right, so the last of our chips is almost finished here. So I'm really happy how these came out. We can see our chips here in the bowl. You have that lovely, nice golden color. You can see my two puppies anxiously hoping for a little treat. I'm going to turn my fat off there now. So let's take these out. I'm gonna give them a good shake always every time you do that. You know, you know, leave the oil in the bowl, or in the pot I should say, I guess not in, not in the bowl. So there you go, there's our chips all done. So why don't we go ahead and we'll move on over to the counter and we'll give these a little taste. So you can see there's not too much of making these potato chips. Let's go ahead and try one. Mm. I don't know how well the mic is picking up the crunch, but I'm definitely getting the crunch in my mouth. You know, so these are really, really easy to make. <clears throat> and you know, if you want flavored chips, simplest thing to do is just pick up some of those popcorn topping things. 
You can shake a little salt and vinegar on your barbecue, whatever flavor you're, you want. I personally just like them nice and plain with a little bit of salt. Sometimes I'll put a bit of black pepper on them. So again, as I've said a few times already, make sure you get that right kind of potato. Make sure you get your temperature set correctly and you'll have no problem making these great chips at home. And you'll love them so much more than anything you buy at the store. So as always, you know what, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned a little bit. And I hope you're going to go ahead and share it with your friends and your family. You know, trying to build that subscription base. If you haven't subscribed yet, really appreciate that. So keep coming back. Keep cooking some great food. And I hope you have yourself a great day. Bye for now.